In this video, I'm gonna share what makes the beautiful part of Phoenix known as Ahwatukee such an in-demand spot in Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, it's Ryan Meeks. I'm a local realtor here in Phoenix, Arizona. I serve the entire Phoenix metro area. And if it's your first time here to my channel, I would love, love, love if you subscribed. I put out weekly content and I aim to make your relocation to Arizona that much more informative and hopefully help you find the right area that suits you and your family or just you or you and a girlfriend, you and a boyfriend, whoever. My information's below if you wanna reach out to me if you have any questions, happy to help. So this is our five pros, five cons series. And I'm gonna to talk to you about what you love about Ahwatukee and what you may not love about living in Ahwatukee. Just to give you some background on Ahwatukee, that's Ahwatukee, it sits in the South Central Valley and it's a one of a kind area in Arizona. It's a mix of families, there's some professionals, there's even some older folks that own second homes. There's even some Canadians that have property down here. It has everything from restaurants to golf to a mild, very mild nightlife scene. Schools have been highly rated and it's an overall pretty great place to live, especially according to niche.com. Let's go through my list and I'll attempt to prove that. So the first pro of living in Ahwatukee is the proximity to the work hubs and the airport. It's ideal for quickly getting to any part of the valley as they just extended the 202 around the southern section. And guess what? There's not a whole lot of traffic flow here, so it's pretty nice. The I-10 is also directly adjacent to Ahwatukee and it kind of runs north and south on the east side of the community and it's only a 20 minute drive from the center of Ahwatukee to Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. Now before this 202 Expressway was put in, it was a far drive to get to the I-10, so this has really helped ease access into and out of Ahwatukee. Getting to the Southeast Valley is quick, as like I said before, the 202 now extends to the east and to the west underneath Ahwatukee, and while it gets slightly backed up during rush hour, it's really not a bad drive. Downtown Scottsdale's pretty close. It's only a 30 minute drive and downtown Phoenix is a 26 minute drive. The tech hub of Tempe is only 20 minutes away and I know a lot of companies are relocating to Tempe. And like I said, this is all from the center of Ahwatukee. A lot of my clients I uh, speak with end up transferring to Tempe. Like I said, there's a ton of businesses relocating their headquarters or opening their branches here. And a lot of people have their children go into ASU, that's Arizona State University, but they aren't quite into the older homes that you see that are pretty prevalent in Tempe, so Ahwatukee makes an even better choice. Now a con of Ahwatukee might be the location as well. While it's in close proximity to some excellent areas while being a bit of a suburban field, there's not much to the south and there's not much to the west. But there are a few good casinos with Horse Pass Casino to the south and Viquiva to the west. The nice thing about these casinos that you don't see here, I should say, is a rundown residential area near these casinos because they're on Indian reservation land. You do see this in a lot of other US cities. One thing that's actually prohibited my buyers from moving to Gilbert and to Queen Creek and even Chandler is the flatness of the land here. That's why Scottsdale and the McDowell Mountains is so friggin' expensive. In Ahwatukee, you have South Mountain and the foothills, and this combination creates some very interesting like San Diego-ish topography with some really just stunning views. Some homes are built into the mountains and others have views from the top of the mountains, while other homes sit at the bottom of the mountain. But these still have an awesome picturesque view with a great landscape just outside your window. So this second pro, in case you couldn't tell, is the million dollar views. On to our next con. I really hate to say this, but some of the homes here really need to be updated, I'm telling you. Right now I'm seeing a lot of 2,500 to 4,000 square foot homes come onto the market and they just have that 90s feel. They have no updates since the owner bought the home. Those that do have updates are gonna cost a pretty penny while those that don't are going to be high priced because, well, it's an in-demand area that's pretty much built out with the exception of some lots available for custom homes. As of this video, I'm currently under contract with some pretty cool buyers and the roof here needs to be replaced as well as some major work on the interior. Another negative is if you're looking for a home with a pool, the pool will more than likely need a full facelift or parts replaced because that pool is probably built in the 
super early 2000s or really late 90s. The third pro of living in Ahwatukee is the types of housing available. So no matter what your budget is, like I said before, you can afford to live there. There are inexpensive condos that start just under 300,000. There are starter single family homes for just above 300,000. And while we're on pricing here, currently with all the homes on the market here, the cheapest is a one bed, one bath condo for 151,000. I probably went for more, don't get me wrong. The cheapest single family home is around 300,000 while the most expensive is $3.3 .3 million. Currently the median home price here is about 350,000. In my opinion, to get into something nice, you're probably gonna have to spend around five or six. So whether you're just purchasing a home out of high school or college or looking for a gated community with a great view and to spend over a million dollars, you will find it here in Ahwatukee. One con for families living in Ahwatukee, and I've seen this issue with more than one family here, is the sloped grades of the streets. There are a lot of hills here. And if you're trying to teach little Timmy or little Susie to ride their bicycle while living on top of one of those hills, well, that could be a hazard. So sending your children out to play here might not be an option until they are a bit older or they have gained control of whatever they're on with wheels or just don't purchase a house on top of a hill. One fourth pro is the dining and the shopping. You don't have to go really far to get great restaurants like my personal favorite breakfast joint, Snooze. You have the living room, which is an upscale wine lounge, which features lunch, brunch, and dinner options. There's more than one sushi place around. There's some Thai restaurants. There's some Mexican restaurants. There's even a restaurant called The Original Burrito Company. I do believe they have the original burrito. There's a few sports bars in the area too. Tukis is one of my favorite. Get it, Tukis, Awatuki. Clever, I know. There's a few other valley-wide sports bars like the popular bar Zips and also Phillies. I'm guessing that's for people from Philadelphia. Most of these restaurants are located in close proximity to the I-10 and on the east side of Ahwatukee. So they're gonna get a lot of traffic from other visitors that are kind of passing through the area as well. However, these remain just far enough away from the residential area, so you're not seeing that traffic from these restaurants. Oh, and I forgot to mention, they even have a Buddy's Pizza, which has recently changed its name to Vero Chicago Pizza, and that's one of my favorite places, so be sure to check that out if you move to Arizona. Great pizza place. Scattered throughout Ahwatukee, there are also some strip mullish areas as well as some decent dining options in case you don't want to really go to that east side of Ahwatukee. But these surprisingly look pretty nice compared to some other areas of Phoenix where you're seeing some older strip malls that look a little bit run down. For shopping, it's very close to the Phoenix Premium Outlets, which is an outdoor mall that's supposed to have a little bit of a discount on designer items. But I don't really think that's the case anymore. Anyways, it's a great place to shop nearby and it has all your favorite name brands and uh, you're sure to find something there. I'm sure we can find a way for you to spend your money. For grocery shopping, hey, there's a Costco nearby only about 15 minutes away from central Ahwatukee and there's even a Sprouts in Ahwatukee. So for all you crazy organic food lovers like me, you'll be set. Our fourth con of Ahwatukee would be the highway noise you might hear living by the 202. I'm kind of looking for cons here, so that came up. Just make sure you're getting something that's nestled in the mountain or away from the highways here, and that includes the I-10. One final pro, and probably one of the biggest, is the fact that you have South Mountain right behind you. It's not only good for views, but it's good for those early morning or late night hikes. According to my handy dandy All Trails app that I use when I go hiking, South Mountain has 98 different trails to choose from, and there's a ton of different access points from the south side of South Mountain. You can actually access South Mountain from the east side, from the north side, wherever. With South Mountain covering 16,000 acres, I think it's gonna take you a little while to explore all its nooks and crannies. Besides hiking, you can even mountain bike here and you can take a horse. You'll be rewarded with some great views as you ascend up to 2,300 feet above the Phoenix skyline. From here, you can pretty much see the entire valley, even downtown. It's a great view. Now this leads me into our final con, and that is the fact that there may be some mountainous critters visiting you. These include everyone's favorite, the bark scorpion, the black-tailed rattlesnake, the Gila monster, the chuckwalla, I hope I said that right, Chuck, the zebra-tailed lizard, 
the bobcat, the javelina, and the jackrabbit. Jackrabbits are pretty cool though. They're almost like mini kangaroos. They look a little bit different from regular rabbits. They're my personal favorite animal in the valley. I've only seen a few, but they're pretty cute. On the flip side, it's one of the best places for bird watchers to see all types of different birds. I'm not sure how many, but I'm told there are a lot. Hey, thanks for watching. For more videos on escaping to Arizona, just click that subscribe button to stay in the loop.